Okay, let's go over the activity. Do I have a volunteer group to do number one? Come on. Come on. <coughs> Angelica's going to walk us through how she did number one. So it doubles every time you go over one X. Okay, so we had a question. Who asked the question? Thomas? What was your question, Thomas? Okay, is the Y intercept always one? Unless if you have an A. Unless you have a constant out in front of your exponential term. Yes, exactly, Noah. So, our exponential functions will go through 0, 1 unless we have a constant out in front. That's good. Way to notice that. That's the y intercept is uh, the a. Okay, so what are you saying, Matt? So the y intercept is a, like he said. The y intercept is a. Always. Why? Because anything raised to zero power is one. Say it again, Evan. Anything raised to the zero power is one. Anything raised to the zero power is one. So when we have an exponent like this, exponential term like this, right? Anything raised <coughs> to the zero power is going to be one. Meaning, whatever our a is times one is going to be our y-intercept. Awesome job. Number two, we have a volunteer. Go ahead, Jared. So give us your function, explain how you got it. Well, the first thing I can tell when looking at the graphs is it's starting large and going small. It's going to have a fraction for B. Cool. Going to have a fraction for B because it smart starts large and small. Cool. And another thing, since the, the asymptote is going to be zero, and the same thing is going to apply where the y-intercept is going to be the A. So we can already tell. Yes. Okay, so you know your 40 is A. So what's your B? B, I got one half because um, it was the first fraction that came to mind. And when I plugged it in with the two, it turned out to, it turned out to be 0.25. And then that multiplied by 40 turned out to be 10. Okay. And then the same thing applied. It was like point. 0, 6, 2, 5, or whatever, and right. that multiplied by 40. Gives you 4. Okay, so give us our... And the uh, fraction's in parentheses, right? Just so we're aware, the fraction is in parentheses. Is that what we got? Okay, so why... Nice job, Gary. So why... Easier way, I guess, instead of getting the decimal, right? One half squared. So I'm just trying to explain what Jared was saying. The one half squared is one fourth, right? You can, you can distribute the square when we're multiplying or dividing. So one fourth of 40 is 10. Just like one half to the fourth is, well, what's two to the fourth? Why is that 116th? Right. 
And 1 16th of 40 is 2.5. Yes, Mr. Negative exponent. Negative exponent. So, like if you had that. Okay, so a fraction raised to the negative exponent. So come on, show us what you mean. So we know that um, 2 to the negative 2 will equal 1 over 4 because by distributing the negative, it basically turns into a fraction. And so you basically move the number to the denominator, or put it under 1. Okay, cool. So basically, since you already have a fraction, it's basically just going to turn to the other side. Okay. So what is one half raised to the negative two going to look like? Four. Everyone see that? Pretty cool. Since you're up there and you want to do the next one, why don't you do the next one? So did that make sense, Jameer? Okay, so a whole number raised to the negative makes it a fraction. So a fraction raised to the negative makes it a whole number. That's not the right one. There it is. I don't know why it skipped so many. Is that the one? Three? Yeah. Okay, Noah, walk us through three. So since we know that the normal y-intercept of, of an exponential function is one, and if the y-intercept is 20, we already know that a is going to equal 20. Cool. And so what I did is I did, uh, I took the y of two and then divided it by a, which you'll get one fourth. And since um, since the x axis is representing the exponent the exponential number or whatever, uh, I'm going to do the square root of one fourth. And so when you do the square root of one fourth, you should get one half. So and then b will equal to one half, and then you got half. Okay. So give us your function completely. Okay, so 20 times 1 half raised to the x. Is that what we got? Josh, what do you got? How did you get your 5 over 20? And where is the 5 coming from? So 5, it, so when you, when you square this, whatever the number is, to uh, when you square whatever the number is, you should will get 5. And since we know that a is 20, you do 5 over 20. What's the number you're squaring? The number you're squaring? It would be one half, it, but since we didn't know it, we're basically we're we're, we're reverse engineering the number. Of it. So how did you get a twenty? That's that's because a is equal to twenty. Okay. And so um, when you top, so we know that you're supposed to do you're supposed to time do twenty times whatever the number after you figure out. What so you kind of did a ratio. <coughs> so you've got, so where people are trying to see where you got the 20 from. So you got the 20 from here, and you got the 5 from here. Yes. Okay. So he did it a different way. That's fine. I mean, you still got the 10 answer. Yeah. Did you get that answer, Josh? 20 times 1 half x raised to the x? No. No. <laughs> what did you get? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. You hadn't got this. Yet. Uh, Okay, oh so, okay, go ahead. And how did you get the one half? Right, okay, because of the square root of one fourth, but he, because he took five over 20, so he did, okay, five over 20 is, he set up kind of a ratio, then took the square root, got lucky, well, square root because, the two, because it happens to be a two, so you were able to do the square root there. But like, for instance, if this was, if it were one five, you wouldn't be able to do the square root because it wouldn't be it would just the square be, term. It would just be the normal ratio. Right. right. It would just be the ratio. Right, right. So let's do it a different way. Okay. So we know it's got to be a fraction, right? Because we start high and low. 
We know our A has to be 20. So now we just have to figure out what fraction So we know, I like to think, let's see, we know here when we plug a 2 in for x, we get a 5 back for y. So what raised to the 2, so this is kind of what Noah did. Uh, <coughs> something squared equals, and then he took the square root. Exactly what he did. Yep. Yeah, right, yeah, you did yours backwards and then got to your answer. I tried to do it straight through. Does that make more sense? Yeah. I get right. math when I can't right. That's fine. That's why I'm here. Really? Volunteer, or am I going to pick someone? Okay. <coughs> I just watched the third one Saturday, actually. Uh, the first one. Was it? The part one or part two? No, the third one. Oh, the third one, part two, must be on the last one. Yeah, there's four Hunger Games movies. I did go to the fair Saturday. Yeah. Saw the tragic yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, really? I couldn't tell if it was you or not. I couldn't tell if it was you or not. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Matt, okay, explain your function to us. So basically, because the zero is five, it goes here, and then five times three equals 15, and that, and then 15 times three equals 45. Okay. <laughs> so. We know it's a whole number because it starts low and high. So he's got the whole number. Check. Now, what did you do to get to make sure it was the first point? How did you make sure that this function worked for those two points? Well, what I did, well, what Jared and I did was uh, we filled this in, we made this zero, and that uh, five times one is five, and then okay. So when you made it, okay. So when you made it zero, let's slow down. So when you made it zero. 3 to the 0 was 1, so 5 times 1 gives us our y-intercept of 5. Cool. Next step. And we filled a 1 in. We plugged a 1 in here, and then five, and then uh, make it 3, and then 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, cool. And the last one? Then we plugged in a 2, which made it 9, and 5 times 9 is 45. Cool. So it looks like our graph works. Our function works. Nice okay. job, man. Good job. Okay. Let's get our notes out. We'll go over the video from